As soon as night falls here, we have our first snake of the night. Oh my God, guys, check it out. This incredible creature here in my hand. Look at that. This is a female. Hello guys, what's up? We're in Chiang Mai City, or rather overlooking Chiang Mai City somewhat. It's kind of in that direction, actually. This is the best view we have right now up here on Doi Su Tep, where we're going to be doing a bit of herping for the next uh, two hours, let's say. It's getting dark now. We just did a bit of a hike. Didn't see anything on it yet, but this is when things get good. We're going to walk down towards the car, see if we find something on the way, and if not, we'll link up with Harold and see if we can find something together. Let's go. Okay, nightfall is here. And once I get my torch in my hand, as soon as night falls here, we have our first snake of the night. And by the looks of things, quite a cool one. This is only the third lycanum fasciatus I've ever seen. And this one has some nice yellow bands on it. Quite a pretty individual. Let me readjust my head torch onto my head and then we can work with it. Okay, head torch is on. Now I can pick this guy up. Oh, whoa, oh, oh. <laughs> Yeah, this is, I already know this is gonna turn into a, a bite fest in the next like three seconds, three. Wait, 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 it's not. Oh my God, I don't know if it realizes I've caught it, but I promise you it is, it is coming. You see that tongue flicking? You ready? You ready? Oh, <laughs> typical wolf snake behavior. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. These ones have a cool like banded venter. That's definitely one way of telling these apart. He's very kind of, I describe them often as being like jigsaw-like bands, especially on the anterior third. Probably one of the prettiest species of wolf snake in the country, in my humble opinion, especially how yellow this one is. Some of you may remember that incredible orange one from Tak province. And this one isn't too shy off that. Maybe it's more brown than, ow, 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 ow. Stop it, mean snake. All right, that's it. They were very like flat, small head, these guys. But this one's honestly quite big for the species. Certainly the largest individual of Lycodon fasciatus I've ever seen. But yeah, nice to see this little snake. And uh, as usual, I'm getting sick of being bitten at this point. So let's let this one go. Just got a, a second snake of the night. This time of nice chunky Parius macularius. Familiar one from the Nan expedition, you know, completely harmless, non-biting slug snake, although they do like to go into this defensive posture, pretending like they're gonna bite, but you know, this species is completely harmless and very common. So just gonna grab a quick foam pick and let this guy cruise off the road. Okay, first snake walking up the stream is one we will likely see many more of on this short walk. It's a Pope's pit viper male, big one, slender one, just chilling out here in this tree and uh, reflecting extremely green on the video as usual. We just got the hills endemic gecko. This is Certidactylus doisetep, doisetep bent toed gecko. Kind of nice, similar to the one in Nan in some ways with this kind of like starry banded pattern on the back. Definitely a beautiful bent toed gecko and one I was hoping to see here. Anyway, I'm gonna let this guy scoot off. Oh my God, guys, check it out. We just got a frog that I've been looking for for so long, wanting to see for so damn long. This here is Brachytarsophorus carinens. Now, I don't actually know the common name for it. Um, maybe like Burmese large mat, I don't know. It's Burmese something, I think. But it's so amazing. And this isn't even a big one. This is like medium sized for how big they get. Holy crap. Like they have these really cool like lumps, like spines on the back, the horns above the eye. And just in general, they're just a freaking amazing frog. One of those Thai frog species I've been high on my hit list for so long and I continuously missed until now. Props to Harry for spotting this one. What a freaking find. It's a real hopper, so I got to keep a close grip on it. But just look at that fat thing. Look at that fat bastard. Oh man, this is such a cool thing to see. So I'm definitely going to get my camera out and take a couple pictures before I let this guy go back. I think he's inflating himself to seem larger, but I haven't seen it not like this. So. Maybe this is just its natural disposition, but goddamn, that is an awesome frog, guys. Check it out. So I wasn't planning on filming any green vipers tonight, but take a look at this now. Look at that. This is a female Pope's pit viper, and undoubtedly the biggest green pit viper I have ever filmed on my channel. It's maybe not the longest green pit viper I've ever seen, 
but in terms of like thickness this is absolutely ridiculous i mean look at this thing when i saw it just up in the bushes above the trail here i wasn't i was like what the hell i could just see part of its body the tail end and i was like holy crap that is a big viper Cass was instantly like this is the biggest one i've ever seen and i just knew i had to get this down to show you guys because this is incredibly impressive now we know it's popes because uh you can see i don't know how well you can see right now but if you take a look at the head it's got a red eye now the popes aren't the only viper to have a red eye of course male comprecti and Trimrosaurus goi, goi's pit viper, also have a red eye, but this one you see has very keeled scales, and it's a female, meaning it lacks the red and white stripe that a male popes or male gump would have, and a female gumprecti would have a yellow eye, which basically means this can only be a female popes pit viper. But holy crap, what an impressive snake. Not particularly defensive at all, this one, but I just thought I'd uh, get it to have a look at me. You guys can see that that long tongue flicking. So iconic with vipers. This is definitely not one you want to get a bite off. Even though popes have a relatively weak venom, the bigger the snake, the bigger the dosage. And you really don't want to get a big whack off this one. That's for damn sure. I'd rather keep clear of that. But yeah, just thought I'd show this one. Not much else to say about it. Just remarkable size, incredible individual. Pretty good. I just released it after filming that sequence. And suddenly it's got all defensive. It was doing a bit of like mouth opening at me. But holy crap, like the head is just so giant. That's why I came up here to get another look, because the head is just ridiculous. Never seen a Pope's Pit Viper this big in my life. But uh, we've only got a little bit of time left herping, so let's get back on it and uh, see if we can find one more snake. Okay, guys, so I just got something that's actually a target. And believe it or not, one of my main targets here was not a snake. Check this out. This incredible creature here in my hand is the Chiang Mai crocodile salamander. Just a week ago, I saw the Pukar crocodile salamander. And after seeing one of these amazing animals for the first time, I knew that I had to find the other species in Thailand. And the first one that we were gonna be in range of was this one here. Tyler to Troton something, I can't remember the specific name, but already you should be able to see how different it is from the Pukar crocodile salamander. So you see it lacks the more the ridge of spines. It's more of a smooth ridge. The ridge is not like vibrant orange. This one, and the whole thing is incredibly dark. This one's got such a dark overall look. And if you take a look in the background, you can see where I found it. I was looking for habitat like this the whole time that we've been here. And just after finding that giant pit viper, I walked into the forest, heard the sound of running water, followed the running water up and found this pond. First thing I saw was the little metamorphs, the little larval stage of this. And then I was like, holy crap, this crocodile newt is here. But I did not expect them to be in the water. I'm not sure about these seasonality, but at certain times of year, they can be incredibly hard to find. And then I saw one under the water and I tried to creep my hand in, but it went under a leaf and I didn't want to disturb the water. So I left it be, went and got Cass, came back over. And when I came back over, it was just crawling there. And I made a grab for it and missed it. I was so sure I lost it. And then all of a sudden it was swimming on the surface and I was just able to pick it up. Obviously not the brightest animal in the world. I mean, does it look like the smartest animal in the world to you? I don't know, but it's certainly freaking cute. And God damn, am I happy to see this incredible little animal, so unique. There's several species of these in Thailand alone. I think we have five species in Thailand. This is only the second I've seen. They're not too distinct from each other, but I didn't think the, the differences would be so clear between this one and the one I saw before, and damn, they are. This is definitely an adult form, not the largest one they can be. I think our Pukar one was a little bit bigger, but definitely a fully grown adult. And yeah, so awesome to see this target. I'm incredibly happy with this. I'm gonna take a couple pictures, let it go back in its pond, and I will go home extremely happy tonight. Amazing. Mm -hmm.